Hey, this is a match once again. What about the other video? And this would be a very interesting one as Sean wanted me to react to the 1992 Royal Rumble, which is uploaded onto YouTube by WWE. And I'll have the link down below. And for those who want to request any other type of commentaries, reviews, re reviews, topics, reactions, randomness, out of blueness, tier list, whatever, feel free. You can either send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And like I said, this will be fun. This will be interesting. I know and have seen this Royal Rumble before. I remember it being a lot of fun. This is the one where Ric Flair won. And you have Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan on commentary. Bobby Heenan given one of the best commentating <laughs> showcases of his life. And... I'm a sucker for the Royal Rumble concept. And you look at the amount of star power during this Royal Rumble, it's insane. But I have a pause at the beginning. It's 1 hour, 9 minutes, and 12 seconds. Thanks once again, Sean. I really appreciate it. Yeah, feel free to send in more of these Royal Rumbles if you want, man. This is cool. Also, check out uh, Jim Cornette and Brian. Uh, they're watch a lot of the 1992 Royal Rumble. That's a lot of fun as well. But three, two, one, pressing play. You have the Royal Rumble banner with the old school WWF logo, which they had to change because of the Wildlife Foundation. Because it was WWF World Wrestling Federation, but the Wildlife Foundation took ownership of that. That's why it changed from WWF to WWE. But WWF just sounds better. We have Howard Finkel, the Fink. Sally, he's passed away. I know Jim Cornette had a lot of nice words about him. Explaining the rules of the Rumble. Now, the Royal Rumble, I think, first was in 1988. And I think it has how Jim Duggan won it the first year. The second year, I think it was Big John Studd in 89. And then 1991, Hulk Hogan won. Now in 91, or 9, and one of them, I think originally the idea was Mr. Perfect was going to win, but then Hulk Hogan vetoed that idea. He said, does it work for me, brother? I gotta win. Which, I mean, Hulk Hogan was the champion. Did he really need to win? Uh, Tunny. For I understand, he was more of like... A public figure but he didn't really have much power so he would like get paid a lot to do really not much of anything Jack Tunney even the audience like who does this shit about Jack Tunney <laughs> who does a fuck see the signs Hulk who by this point I mean Hulk Hogan you understand have been the champion, pretty much, aside from, you know, Macho Man was a champion, Ultimate Warrior was champion once, but he was a top guy from, like, 84 to here, so that's, like, eight years now, and even got to a point where there are still Hulk Hogan fans, but there were people getting tired of him, there were people getting just tired of it, that's why originally when Hulk Hogan gets out, they cheered, yeah, it's not Hulk Hogan, it's this guy, Sid. He's a big guy, he's a new guy. Yeah, Sid. And even if you like the cereal, if you eat it every single morning, you get tired of it. So by this point, Hulk Hogan was getting stale to the public. And they wanted something new and fresh. So then Hulk Hogan didn't last until, what, 93? It was like his last year. He had that awful bit in summer in a uh, WrestleMania where he beat Yokozuna in like ten seconds. Was it WrestleMania? I think it was. And uh, other crap. Because uh, we got the Bridge Bulldog and the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, which uh, the Million Dollar Man would not be, and of course, sensational Sherry with him. Million Dollar Man would not be in here that much longer. I think very soon after he would be gone. I mean, he's... 
he was a, one of the big WWF villains of that era. From having his servant Virgil to all sorts of stuff. He had a very catchy everything for a price. Money, 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 money. And then British Bulldog, of course, was uh, in certain related to uh, Bret Hart. And not too long after, Bret Hart and British Bulldog would have that match, I want to say in SummerSlam. It was uh, overseas. I think the, the next SummerSlam, it would be those two. And yeah, British Bulldog was kind of going up the ranks. But uh, one thing led to another. See, it seemed like Bill Dominic was going to do something, but then Bulldog got up. It's like, get your ass down so I could do this. And the reason Bill Dominic is getting all these moves in is because he's going to be the first one out. So, it's like, I want to get some moves in. I want to look somewhat strong in some way. So let's get these moves in. Look how good I am. But then he's going to be the first out. But Million Dollar Man was definitely a good villain. Did well in his promos. I love that punch that he we saw. See, boom, out. That bunch where he kind of do like this and go all the way down. I don't can't think of anybody else that did that kind of punch. But right there, people know the British Bulldog, Million Dollar Man, people know him. It's not a bunch of jobbers. You get people with something to cheer about from the beginning. Get the people on their feet. Yeah. Get people excited. It's not two people no one gives a shit about. Dully D and Dully Do. And you get Rick Flair is number three. Now Rick Flair with Mr. Perfect. Kurt Henning. Rest in peace to Kurt. Like I said, apparently Mr. Perfect, you know, he had a bit with Hulk Hogan. It really didn't go anywhere because Hulk Hogan didn't want to give up the top spot. The few times he did, he manipulated his way where Macho Man won in WrestleMania 4. And what happened? Think, what great heels did he face up against as the champion, the hero, after WrestleMania 4? You can't remember much because soon after it was... Oh, we're the tag team with the mega powers. And to lead to WrestleMania 5, where Hulk would get the belt back from Randy Savage. But yeah, Red Flair, he'd be the, I mean, NWA, WCW, people know him from everywhere else. So he's still somewhat new to the WWF at this point. And. So, weirdly enough, he wasn't as big as you would think. Because he had worked with Ricky Steamboat on those matches. Look how strong this is, these power presses to get Ric Flair up. And then down, now. Safe. Help his back, back and neck so he doesn't get hurt. And Ric Flair will always do these great ways of selling. And he's always known for his crazy cardio. See, you saw Ric Flair staying in the bed like he was waiting for Davy Boy Smith to bridge build out the goal a bit faster with the clothesline. So he's waiting a little bit too long because Davy didn't really work at that speed. But yeah, Rick knew how to sell. And do these crazy things like this bit, the bit with the baiting. He would do that a lot. But yeah, he worked with you know, Steen, he worked with Ricky Steamboat, all this stuff. Worked with bit with Hogan, but I guess it just wasn't selling, was as popular as people thought. And one of the nasty boys. <clears throat> it was funny, like the year before, one of the nasty boys was in the final three. I think it was last year, it was Hogan, Earthquake, and I think it was the other nasty boy. So this guy gets to come in number three. The nasty boys was a tad team. They were more brawler. There wasn't really anything technical. It was mainly like the way they looked and fight, like more memorable than matches. I think they had the match with Legion of Doom, where Legion of Doom won the tag team titles, I believe. Like people remember the Nasty Boys. One of the bits where they had their armpit and they had the opponent rub into their armpit. Like the one going to the other. Take the opponent to the other guy, you know, 
their teammate's armpit or whatever. Like one nasty boy holds it, pushes the opponent to the other nasty boy's armpit is what I'm saying. But Bobby, Bobby the Brain, he and the reason his time to do so great is, of course, he's ruined for Ric Flair. So when something goes wrong, he's like, no. But when something goes right, yeah, like, he's really getting the viewer pumped up for it. And sadly, David Boy Smith, I think he had issues with drugs and stuff. And he was in WCW for a little brief bit that did nothing. Nice drop kick. And uh, then when he came out, they didn't, nothing really happened with it. Of course, he was part of Bolt, uh, the British Bulldogs tag team before this. Trying to get in the singles at this point. But yeah, with Riff Flair and Hulk Hogan, they're supposed to have all these programs, and they did, but the house shows, it just wasn't as popular. I think one of the things was that people were getting tired of Hogan. Maybe people didn't get Riff Flair, but he's definitely a good heel, but... Maybe people in WWF didn't know Ric Flair as much as other places did. Because they only knew the WWF way. But like I said, Hulk Hogan... This is the time when he's getting into movies. Suburban Commando, Mr. Nanny. We got Haku. Thought to be legitimately one of the most dangerous people that you did not want to mess with. Like in a type of fight, he would bite your nose off or something. So people definitely respected Haku as a tough as hell guy. Never got to be a top guy or anything, but he's definitely a guy people remember. And, I mean, to go out there with bare feet, I mean, he wasn't really known for promos or anything of the sort, but legitimate tough guy people did not want to fuck with Haku. So, yeah, I mean, while maybe he's not as popular as Ric Flair or you know, Roddy Piper, Macho Man, you know, people still remember Haku for, for those reasons <laughs> and the Royal Rumble is always a fun bit because there's so many things that could happen damn nice uh, pile driver and then Riffler's going to scratch your eyes out is that you get so many familiar faces some that have never been in the ring together and this is a way to do it and you get a lot of variety of action like that nice knee drop there to the face before we saw Haku do the power driver. David Boy didn't sell the power driver as much, so he did get out of the way. But for a power driver, he should have sold a bit, you know, on the ground more. Ooh, kick to the face. Looked pretty close, like dead on target. And, you know, as a guy once said, you know, back in the day, we don't want to hurt people, but we want people to make it seem like we hurt people. But nowadays, we're hurting people legitimately, and no one buys into it. With all these crazier matches they get into. Definitely showing a strong bit with Davy Boy Smith. I mean, he got Million Dollar Man out. He got the Nasty Boy out. He got now Haku out. Definitely show a strong showing for Davy Boy Smith. Of course, you got Shawn Michaels, which at this point had just turned on his partner, Marty Jannetty. And now he was a villain. He was part of the, the Rockers. Very uh, good tag team. And then he turned on Marginetti because he's a bad guy. And of course, Shawn Michaels would definitely become one of the big stars. Sweet chin music, but <laughs> Ric Flair caught that with both his hands. Yeah, I'm not getting that shit. David Boy Smith getting some power play there with a body slam. And a nice clothesline. Shawn could definitely sell. And Shawn Michaels is a very talented. He would do this bit here where he did, didn't quite connect with that sweet chin music. Didn't quite connect. Kind of got his ear. <clears throat> but I mean, I don't like Shawn Michaels as a person to hear all the stories about how awful and terrible he was. And supposedly he's changed as he found God. But when you talk to people, it's like, no, nah, he didn't really change. I mean, he found God, but he didn't really change. He's still a guy who... With his, you know, lazy eye, you know, fuck with people. But if you talk to, like, Shane Helms, the Hurricanes, like, this guy's still the same fucking guy. And he just very, you know, playing almost as many political games as Hulk Hogan. And, you know, just watch his match with Vader. 
just yelling, move, you fat fuck, move, you know, in the middle of a match and all that stuff. Talented, but I much prefer Brett the Hitman Hart. Shawn Michaels, very talented wrestler, can't take that away from him. Great with the agility. I'm just saying, I'm much more of a Brett guy than a Shawn guy. I'll say that. Now we got Tito Santana, or in this case, the Matador. Ariba. Which, for some... A lot of times they would give people professions. You're a plumber, or you're a hockey player, or in this case, you're a bullfighter. Like, what, some of the few demons that worked was The Undertaker. A few years later, Razor Ramon. But a lot of times these demons didn't really work. I mean, and Tio Santana, I would call a glorified jobber. Kind of like Coco Beware. Not that they were a bad wrestler, but they would come in that just... People remember them, or people recognize their name. But... Like, Tio Santel, I mean, going back to the first WrestleMania, he was around. But, I can't remember matches that he won. Like, he was in there, but kind of like Coco Beware. When you bring Coco Beware, it was to lose. Like, he lost to Yokozuna, well, on the first Monday Night Raw. I think he lost in the first uh, WrestleMania. It's kind of like Tio Santel at this point. He was never going to get bigger. People maybe recognize him from years ago. I think he is in the Hall of Fame. Before all that, I'm sure he was a great talent, but again, they were not going to do really anything with Tito or the Matador, where the fuck. That flying, you know, fist to the, the face. Decent move there. Of course, funny that Sean and Michaels and Ric Flair would have the match later on in WrestleMania. It was supposed to be Ric Flair's retirement match, but did not come to be. Now we got the Barbarian. Which I know him and the last guy, the Warlord, I think had a tag team at one point. The Powers of Pain. I think that was them. But this is a guy that, you know... Again... All the guys in the ring... He's a guy that no one's really going to remember. That good sized body. But I would say even, you know, Davey Boy Smith was a bit better than him. But I mean, compared to Red Flair and Shawn Michaels and. <clears throat> I didn't, can you really remember any big matches with the Barbarian? But I mean, he's a big, tough guy, strong guy. And you gotta think, this is around the time where you don't have the steroid trials. Uh, and this is a turning point where a lot of people would leave and go be gone, disappear. Not too long, you'd have the, the new generation. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Scott Hall, A.K. Razor Ramon, Kevin Nash, Diesel, Shawn Waldman, the 123 Kid. And then, literally... What, five years later or so? Four, well, four, yeah, four or five years later, you get Stone Cold Steve Austin, you get The Rock, and uh, the Attitude Era. It looked like Shawn Michaels was waiting to do a move, and then I guess I'd go do this. <laughs> Try to do these moves where, you know, Shawn would do this a lot in other Royal Rumbles. What was it? I think 95 was the one where he came in at number one and he won it at the end. Because he got a lot into Vince's ear by that point as the, the golden boy. Which I don't know why because whether with Brett or him, like they weren't selling and doing the best, sadly. Now this is Terry Von Erich here known as the Texas Tornado. Which he actually has a fake foot. I forget which foot it is. The left or right one. But it's a fake foot. Like a rod. With, and the shoes in it. But yeah he had lost his foot. I forget where. But of course his family. The Von Erichs went back with Ric Flair. See that's the Flair flop. But yeah. Texas Tornado would have that. That discus punch. Where you do this turn. And there's Shawn Michaels selling. 
like he's drunk. <laughs> Maybe a bit comedic, but yeah, it works for it's supposed to be heartfelt. <clears throat> and that bit there, like again, Shawn Michaels definitely doing some selling. But yeah, the Texas Tornado or the Terry Von Erich. When you look up the Von Erich family, there's a lot of tragedy involved. <laughs> Tio said they wanted to do run him through barbarian through the ropes and realize he can't do that everyone's in the way <laughs> but yeah the von erich it's just that there's people that die there's people that kill themselves i think terry von erich i'm sorry if i'm wrong i think he eventually like got drunk or on judge or something and sam by his family who passed away and Shotgun in his mouth. I believe that was him. This guy attached to know I think self-inflicted shotgun wound to the head. I believe. I'm sorry. I know one of them did. I think it was him. And yeah, one of his feet was a uh, fake. Like it was a uh, again metal rod and stuff. Now, this guy here, Repo Man, see, this is when I first saw wrestling was on a VHS tape my aunt had sent. And it was this era with people like Repo Man, and I think it was a year later, like Razor Ramon and other people on it. I think it was like Monday Night Raw. Now, this guy, I think, was one of the original people on Demolition, I believe. The, ba the, the team Demolition, I think he was one of the, one of them. Axe or Smash? I think so. Don't quote me on it, but I, th I swear he was. Tio Santana had again some moments to shine there. So they give him, you know, Tio Santana a bit. Yeah, but Repo Man, you know, definitely not a gimmick people don't remember. <laughs> Days on end. I only remember because that was when I first saw wrestling was either Hulk Hogan VHS tapes or uh, yeah Smash. He was the wrestler Smash and Demolition Repo Man. And then this is one of the gimmicks they had after they disbanded Demolition. Not nearly as successful as Demolition. Repo Man, God. And, I mean, this is looked at as one of the best Royal Rumbles, which is understandable, because it's just the town involved. Like, Terry Von Erich, I thought, he worked well in the ring. You know, he had a family of uh, wrestlers to learn upon, and he has a history of Ric Flair. And Great Valentine, guy that's been many, many years in wrestling. Definitely has a history with people, including Ric Flair. Great the Hammer Valentine. Another Hall of Famer. But yeah, I was going to say, Terry Von Erich was the son of Fritz Von Erich. He had brothers David, Kevin, Mike, and Chris. Like I said, there was a lot of tragedy involved with that family. Morris took Lassen in the nearly end of his life. Badly injured right leg. Right foot had to be amputated, so it was his right foot. Terry had told someone apparently that he wanted to follow his three late brothers, David, Mike, and Chris, the late two of whom had died by ending them with their lives. And uh, I believe it was a shotgun to the the mouth. No. Single John shot to the heart with a 44 caliber pistol. Okay, it wasn't a shotgun. I don't know why. 44 caliber pistol to the heart. Maybe it's one of his other brothers that was a shotgun to the head. So think about that. Of the five, was it five brothers? Four of them have died. 
And three of them were from suicide. That is just fucking crazy, man. That is crazy. That's just sad. I said, in 1993, the, the next year. So, like I said, if you if you look up the Von Erds, it's a very sad history with that family. And the thing is, around this time, he got to be the Intercontinental Champion. Not for long, but he did. And then you got Nikolai Volkov. This is a guy who was a wrestler for many upon many years. Maybe not the best in this point, but labeled as a you know a villain for many years. He had a tag team with the Iron Sheik. I think they were a tag team at the first WrestleMania event. He was in the WWF and Mid South. I think there was another team with Boris Zukov, the Bolsheviks. Like again, looked at as a villain for many upon many years. <coughs> and I think he would not be in this lawn as well. So you have a lot of people leaving for various reasons. And there he goes. Just Red Flair would not be in Rus he would not be in WWF that long. I mean he had the WrestleMania with Macho Man Randy Savage, which is a fun match. But after that he wouldn't be in it that long. The Nasty Boys would not last too long as a the tad team. Miller Dom and Ted DiBiase would not be here that long. You know, Tio Santana's life was uh, as a wrestler. I think Tio Santana became a teacher, I believe. School teacher or something. Uh, I believe that was the case. Bid Boss Man. I love the Bid Boss Man. Bid Bubba. Love the energy. Just. <laughs> Let's just fucking. Be the shower, everybody. I love that. <laughs> I love the Bid Boss Man when he was the hero. Ray Trailer is his real name. He was at WCW as sort of a guard. He was like a bodyguard. Was with Jim Cornette. I mean, Jim Cornette, the famous or infamous uh, scaffold where Bib Bossman, that was him, supposed to catch Jim Cornette, couldn't see it. And so Jim Cornette fell and fucked up his legs, his knees. But, uh,. I got the repo man. <laughs> Try to steer her around like a damn raccoon. And when he came into the WWF, he was a bad guy. And he used to be a crutches officer in real life. That's kind of why they went with this character. I, I, that's way to put it. Because he was a crutches officer. And he was a bad guy. He had the manager slick. And... Like, I think he defeated Coco Beware in a SummerSlam, and then, like, say he was a bad guy. And then at one point, they turn him face, and, uh, there goes Terry Von Erich. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't. It was, uh, there he goes now. It's like, damn, we're flared at two people at the same time. Well, almost the same time, you know, one after the other, I meant. But yeah, Bib Boss Man, I think, turned face in, like, 1990. Just before that, I remember he had the thing with Hulk Hogan. But yeah, remember the old... Oh, damn, there's Shawn Michaels gone with Tito Santana. Nowadays, can you imagine Tito Santana taking out Shawn Michaels? Hell no. But this is him starting as a villainous character, a heel. And that is Hercules. Hercules Hernandez. Which he definitely looks different than what he did before. Now he looks like a guy at a truck stop. Definitely different from his, how he looked in the 80s. But I said, I love the, the big boss man. I wish he was in this more. I wish he was in this longer. 
I think he could have been this a lot longer. But yeah, Big Boss Man, I remember like the thing he had with nails, the crazy convict. But yeah, he had a program with Hulk Hogan with that blue steel cage and Hogan, give me the the that uh, super soup mega suplex from off the top rope, which Hogan never did. Look at this. No, 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 no. And the crowd was into him. He was a fan favorite. And I love the like this with the, the kick. That crazy clothesline. And look at this with the kick. He'd really get those legs up. Like, people really get into this. That's why this should have been longer. And then this bit here with... And then he, he didn't quite get it, so he's got to push himself off. It's like, ah, oh, man, come on now. But we're, that's the whole point is that everyone's beating on Ric Flair. There's no way he could win. Everyone's beating the hell out of him. He's been cocky on the top guy. And they need him alone to get this reaction from the crowd, which is an insane reaction. Because who is it? Rowdy Roddy Piper. Miss Roddy Piper. One of my favorites. Love, love, love Roddy Piper. Great. And look at just tearing into this. The high that look at the crowd just getting out of their seat and popping for it. Actually, Million Dollar Man lasted a bit longer. He was with Money Inc. And he he would actually last a bit longer than I remember. But he was on, on the outskirts of being out. But yeah, Roddy Piper just... Him and Ric Flair had worked together. They were great friends. Very close. They just worked so well together. And this is definitely one of the best parts of this WrestleMania... I see Rick and Roddy. You blocked it. <laughs> now Roddy was never a big tethical wrestler, but he he was a, a brawler type, but he worked for his style of wrestling and it's funny, it's crazy. Like he was a heel, the dirtiest of heels, you know, back in WrestleMania one. You know, fighting Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. And now he was such a fan favorite. People loved him. And no matter what, you know, he could never really be healed again. And Roddy Piper just... Yeah, I was so sad when he passed away in 2015. I mean, he was like 61 or so. And Jake the State Robbers, like, look at that. Ric Flair, Roddy Piper, and Jake the Snake Roberts. I mean, how fucking awesome and crazy is that, man? Just to have those three. And Jake's like, you go ahead and do it. Being smart. Being the smart guy. I don't need to do this shit. You fucking do it. Oh, you know what? His back is turned. He's the snake. And, you know, Jake the Snake has gone through a lot of troubles throughout his life. I mean, you look up his family history... And how much of a scumbag his dad was. And what happened to his sister. No wonder he got so fucked up on drugs. I don't agree with all of his assessments. Like, I don't agree with his assessment on Bret Hart and other wrestlers. But I did like him in the ring. He's fantastic as a promo. And the DDT. Which I think there were other people doing that move. But he really made it his own to the point that anytime you think of DDT you think of... Of him. The way he set him up with the clothesline. People will shout DDT. DDT. I mean he got the move over. Stuff like this. Well, he's about ready to get it. But ah. Oh, you know get the, the audience into it. It really worked out well. I mean Jake was a great wrestler. 
This is Bobby the Brain Heenan Great. <laughs> for those who don't know, first Bobby the Brain is like, oh, thank you, Roddy, for helping him. That's not, that's not a skirt. That's a tilt. And then when he starts beating on uh, Ric Flair, oh, you no good idiot. You know that's a, that's a skirt, not... No, he, he would say, that's a tilt. That's not a skirt. That's a tilt. You no good, some bit. You know, he didn't say, you no good idiot. That's a skirt. That's not a tilt. That's a skirt. Like, the way he would flip-flop is just hilarious with Bobby the Brain Heenan. I got Hass at Jim Duggan, the winner of the first Royal Rumble. And yeah, a lot of these guys would go to WCW and not last that long. Like, Jake the State, after The Undertaker beat him at WrestleMania, and some supposedly Jake was mad that he didn't get to be on the booking like he was promised. So he went to WCW, and he only lasted like a few months. And that's when his drug problems really came into severeness. They came back for a little bit around 96 or 7. As that, like, that green garb and more religious, but he was still on drugs. But they said him, Stone Rose Steve Austin got that Austin 316. Just Jake the State was doing these Bible passages. And you John, th Austin 316 says, I just whooped your ass. They sent part to Jake the State's stuff that he was doing at that time. But I mean, that's what was great about this Royal Rumble. Seeing... I mean, in the same War Rumble you get, Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Jake the Snake, Macho Man Randy Savage, you had the Million Dollar Man, like, like all these people in there, it's just insane, the amount of recognizable people. And you don't have The Undertaker in there, you don't have, you know... And the idea, the stuff between Roddy and Rich was just great. Some of the best parts of the whole Royal Rumble. They really got people going. And Roddy and Jake the State. I don't even know if Roddy and Jake the State Roberts ever had a match together. They might have, but I can't remember. That's what I mean. It was very rare that you got to see these two guys together in the ring. IRS, Ernor, Shyster. Who would later be with Billion Dollar Man Ted DiBiase for Money Inc. Mike Rotunda is his real name. Mike Rotunda. And one of his kids is, uh, I believe, Bray Wyatt. You know, in Wrestling Today, I believe one of uh, Ira. So, yeah. IRS, I believe one of his kids is Bray Wyatt. At least I believe that's the case. What's this fucking tie business? Do it with my tie. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people need to be professions. You know, IRS. It's not tax day. Yeah, two of his sons. One became Bray Wyatt and the other became Bull Dallas. I think he had three kids, but two of them became wrestlers. But he was in All Japan. He was in Jim Crocker Promotions. And of course the WWF. And again, he was a mainly known WWF for the tag team Money Inc. with Million Dollar Man. What do you think was after this? Where they beat the, the Legion of Doom or the Road Warriors. But yeah, just a crazy, you know, entertaining match. And I think at this, I think this is the Royal Rumble that he he won. He uh, beat the Mountie, became the IC champ. I believe this was the one. The only time he was Intercontinental Champion. And then he got Bret Hart. They were in a, a match in WrestleMania and he lost it. 
pretty good match. But it's Bret Hart. And we got Jimmy Stuka, the murderer. Jimmy Stuka, the fucking murderer. For those who don't know, yes, he did murder his girlfriend. And WWF covered it up. Third degree murder and involuntary manslaughter charges in relation to the May 1983 death of his girlfriend Nancy in Allentown, Pennsylvania. He was unfit to stay in trial in 2016 due to his being diagnosed with dementia. He died 12 days later at the age of 73. Yeah, Jimmy Stucker, fuck that guy. He's a piece of shit. Murderer. That idea in WWF covered up because at one point, Jimmy Stucker was the most popular guy in WWF and they, he was going to be the big guy. I think it was before Hogan. Or around the time of Hogan when he first got into it. And once in a while they were bringing him back like this for the dead people. Oh, yeah. But I don't know why the fuck they wouldn't even have Jimmy Stuckter there and be like, just stay away and don't be on TV and don't. The But they fade. Hey, there were still people who were fans who remember the Jimmy Stuckter bit. Either with the coconut with Roddy Piper and him or going up on the top of the cage and doing the, the dive. Which I don't think he won the match at that when he that famous bit. I don't think so. Ah uh, yes, the Undertaker. Which the, he was a Mark Calloway, he was a new gimmick at this time. I think he had debuted was it the previous year of Royal Rumble? It might have been, or, or may, no, maybe it was 1990. Yeah, it might have been 1990 when that was the case. <clears throat> yeah, Undertaker. It was funny enough, he was going to be called Kane the Undertaker, but they just said on Undertaker, of course, Kane would later be another heel later on. Survivor Series, that's what it was, Survivor Series. It, wasn't right. it was Survivor Series where he debuted. That's right, because he had that fucking egg. And there's thoughts that Undertaker would come out of the fucking egg, but thankfully, as shitty as it was, it was the Dobbly Gooker that came out of the egg. Do you imagine if this Undertaker came out of the egg? That'd be so stupid. But as soon as people saw him, people went, Whoa, what the hell, and who the hell is this, and... The whole gimmick is that he wouldn't sell. Ooh, low blow. And the family jewels. As Bobby the Brain would say, two points. Yeah, no, half saw Jim Duggan. And it, those gloves, look at it, he keeps having to readjust those gloves. He must have been like, I hate these fucking gloves. And this is when he's on the gray clothing of the gloves. At one point, they changed it to purple. I think the gray was better than purple. But in a way, Vince McMahon wanted to make this Disney of wrestling. Wanted to make it more for kids. And that's why, you know, people get more crazy outfits and more crazy professions and ideas for kids. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. Speaking of uh, clothing like for kids. But he wanted Jake the Snake Roberts. Because at this point... And just ways. Uh, actually, I'll be right back. Sorry about the edit. I wanted to double check on something. I'm paused at 42 minutes and 22 seconds. I'll unpause in a bit. But I just wanted to double check as I'm paused with Undertaker choking Ra Macho Man Randy Savage and Roddy Piper's holding Undertaker's hair. Uh, at this point, Macho Man was going up against Jake the State Roberts because I guess the uh, initial idea was Jake the State Roberts was going to feud with Ultimate Warrior but Ultimate Warrior was let go for various reasons that he would usually get let go he wanted too much money he tried to blackmail Vince McMahon and not want to show up the drug policy, all sorts of stuff. Although I think at this point, no, yeah, at, at this point, yeah, that that's what it was. Because 
and the year before, they'll build it up because Ultimate Warrior had lost. Because in 1991, the Ultimate Warrior lost the championship to Sergeant Slaughter because of Macho Man Randy Savage. And that's where then you got the WrestleMania between Macho Man and Macho Man Randy Savage and Ultimate Warrior, which I think is Ultimate Warrior's best match. And that, yeah, that was the previous WrestleMania. And so, because of a retirement match and he lost, he was retired from wrestling, but because of people like Duke the State Roberts, who during some kind of party or anniversary had a snake and almost bit Elizabeth and Undertaker was worked with Jake the State. That's why Undertaker goes after Machman throughout this. Because he was with Jake the State Roberts. That's why Machman is so gun old to get Jake the State Roberts is because he tried to hurt and fuck up Miss Elizabeth and Machman didn't like that. And I think Jake the State got in this feud is originally supposed to be him and Undertaker dealing with Ultimate Warrior, but then that one and there were segments in Vol where you do find on YouTube, Jake the State is telling Ultimate Warrior to dig and all this other stuff, and Ultimate Warrior is afraid of Undertaker, so Jake the State would get Ultimate Warrior to get ready for Undertaker, but then he was going to turn on it, and that was going to turn to a feud and all this stuff. Obviously, that didn't happen. Get into this Ultimate Warrior stuff going on. So he went into this feud. So 42 minutes, 22 seconds, on pause right now. See, Jake the Snake is getting back into it. Macho Man is dealing with Undertaker. <clears throat> now, I think Macho Man did something here that he completely screwed up. I don't think this was planned coming up. He did some moves in there. Beats the shit out of him. The crowd goes wild. He gets his double axe handle, gets some nice moves in there. And he's going to get the high knee out. Now, you see what Macho Man does. He goes over the top rope here. I don't think that was planned. Because he just eliminated himself. As like Undertaker is like, I ditch your ass back into that thing. You screwed up, man. And then the commenters even go, I think he eliminated himself. You love runs control your pocketbook. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, Macho Man. Like, this makes sense. He's so gunno about what happened to his wife that he doesn't give a shit. Now Bobby the Brain saying, oh, well no one threw him over the rope, so now he's still in. Which is bullshit, because that was never a rule before. It's, Randy Savage screwed up, he was supposed to be in it a lot longer, so they had to come up with a way to like, oh shit, he wasn't supposed to do that. So, oh, he, someone had to throw him, throw him out, you can't get out yourself. I don't know if that rule's been implemented and stuck on later on, but I think I think uh, Randy fucked up. I think at this point he kind of knows he fucked up, and he's like, "Oh man," so he's kind of on the ground for a little bit. I can't believe I fucked that up. It's so weird to see the Undertaker in this stage, so because you're so used to seeing him much later, whether it's the Biter or even the later. This is such a different type of Undertaker. Look wise, behavior wise. And so on and so forth. But look at the people in the ring. You got Ric Flair, Undertaker, Roddy Piper, Macho Man Randy Savage. Even you had saw Jim Duggan. That's a crazy bit. <laughs> The Berserker. God, who remembers this? The guy who thought he was a Norseman. A guy whose tendency was to throw people... This this should be the match he wins. He throws people out of the ring. 
for and wins by a count out. That was like his big winning move. No, one rem I mean this is I did as a kid with my aunt sending VHS tapes taped. I remember this guy like Repo Man. I remember there's a bit where he had a sword and he tries to stab Undertaker in the fucking mat, and Undertaker gets out of the way and the sword sticks it to the mat. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? But yeah, he didn't last too long. Because... Do people remember his promos? Do people remember his matches? Do people remember his moves? Or his personality? The one thing, if you do remember... Either he does this with his hand... Or he stuck a sword and almost tried to murder someone. <laughs> but... uh so, I mean, part of me enjoys this as a nostalgia, because it, you know, it was either Hulk Hogan videotapes, VHS tapes. And I was a fan of Hulk Hogan back in the day. Not so much nowadays. I do watch some of those old matches till I have fun. I think he was really good on the mic to get that energy going. I just see why, even as a kid myself, I got into Hulk Hogan. It's just as years he went down, I appreciate more Roddy Piper, Bret Hart... Stone Cold Steve Austin, Bret the Hitman Hart, like Ricky Steamboat, Roddy Piper, like those are some of my favorites. Macho Man Randy Savage would be in there. Guys, I appreciate more. But Berserker, like almost like that wasn't a nice landing for Randy. He just kind of dropped him, almost made him land on his ass. It's Virgil with the barber shop <laughs> fucking pants. Remember Virgil? Which nowadays he's kind of, he's a meme. He's now just a meme where uh, everyone just beating the shit out of Virgil. Damn. What was the one meme where he, for autographs and he's by himself and nobody wants to be around him? Like there's no one around him? Like if you look at Virgil nowadays, it's a bit of a meme with some of the stuff he says or does. But back then, he was the assistant of Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. And at one point, he stuck up for himself and won the Million Dollar Belt. Looked like a really pretty belt made of like, looked like diamonds and a dollar signs. The Million Dollar Belt. He won that. And... It seemed like they were going to do more with him. I mean, there's a bit of Roddy Piper trained him and helped him. and I think WrestleMania 7. I think it was Roddy Piper helping Virgil and WrestleMania 7. I think WrestleMania and then SummerSlam. Pretty soon after going to like 93, he'd pretty much be a jobber. I think they tried for a little bit, but they realized he can't really work in the ring. He doesn't really have much personality. You know, some people were behind him, but not as much as they thought. So, okay, he's going to be a jobber. And there's the Iron Sheik. At this point, Colonel Mustafa. This is when Sergeant Slaughter... Uh, well, I don't think he was a villain at this time anymore. That was more uh, last year. But last year when Sergeant Slaughter turned heel and he was with the... That's when, that's when the Gulf War was happening, so we got to make it more about that. So Iron Sheik became Colonel Mustafa. But the Iron Sheik, again, he was not in the best shape at this point. You know, remember him getting beat by Hulk Hogan way back in the day. Before the first WrestleMania. But still, I mean, interesting to have these... I'm going to call it the Iron Sheik. I know it's Colonel Mustafa, but it's the fucking Iron Sheik. Now I remember him from his 
Hulk Hogan, I fuck your ass, break your back and make you humble. <laughs> like his like drug crazed drunken rants that you can find on YouTube. I break your back, fuck your ass and make you humble. Like what? You wanna do what now, Iron Sheep? Jesus. And Virgil, God Virgil, for fuck's sake, Virgil. Yeah, the lonely Virgil memes in 2012 posted pictures of him at conventions with nobody lining up. It was originally created by Sam of the Opie and Anthony radio show. And there's a picture, Virgil wrestling superstar and there's nobody around in, I guess, 2006. Ah, uh, but yeah, Rit the Motto Martel. <clears throat> Which he did a good job as a villain. With his arrogance. But that was his, uh... What the fuck was that thing? For his clone. You smell as good as me. Your arrogance. And he was part of a tag team, I think. And WrestleMania 3, he was part of a tag team. They were good guys. Uh, Strike Force was another tag team he was in. Then he became the model in the late 80s. And would people. I think he beat Toko Beware as well in one of the WrestleManias. I think Toko Beware, anytime he's in it, you know he's going to lose, is to put someone over. The, the feud I remember was with Jake the Snake Roberts. And I think... Was that a WrestleMania, I want to say? Yeah, it was a blindfold match. WrestleMania 7 is actually my favorite WrestleMania. There's so many matches I remember from that. Ultimate Warrior versus Macho Man. The blindfold match between Jake the Snake and Rit the Model Martel. And by 93, they really wasn't doing much with him. At 94, 95, he wasn't in much. And here's Hulk Hogan. Which, yeah, there were people cheering him on, of course. But, and, you know, you see the crowd going wild. You have the, the Hulk Hogan, you know, banners. There are a lot of kids and people who liked him. It's just not nearly as popular... You know, the, the lights are... So, it's not to say he was not popular at all. But it's like, people loved to see him. They enjoyed seeing him. And, hey, we, we liked him. But then when it got to the ending, I think, and went... Oh, wait. Yeah. I oh, don't win for a third time? I mean, cool, but... Look, yeah, Virgil took care of Rit the Mile Martel. Virgil. So, they were behind Virgil. For about five minutes. This is probably the only time you'll see the Berserker and then later on Skinner fight Hulk Hogan. And hey, if Hulk Hogan's going to lose, he's got to do something like dip the Undertaker out. There's Berserker. And I, Hulk Hogan worked for the hero, the wrestling. He had the body, he had the stature, he could do the promos. And let, with him and Ric Flair, it seemed like there would be a lot. But at the same time, like some people have said, Ric Flair could not do a lot of the stuff that he could with the other guys, like, you know, Ricky Steamboat and stuff. I mean, I thought they worked well together, but again, I just, the crowds just, they didn't really see as much chemistry as you would think, which is, I don't know. I remember when Hulk Hogan went to WCW, and almost immediately they had him beat Ric Flair and win the championship, and I said, well, now what? 
and people were quickly to boo Hulk Hogan, and that's why they one of the reasons why he turned heel. But Stinner, the Alligator Hunter Stinner, who was part of a tag team called the Fabulous Ones that was actually fairly popular back in the day, would have matches with the Midnight Express, and now he's an Alligator Hunter, spitting tabacky. And then probably the only time you see Hulk Hogan and Stinner in the same fucking brain. Like, who the fuck is Stinner? Stinner? Not that Stinner. <laughs> with the model with his ears. Oh my god, my ears. And Red Flair and Roddy Piper been in there a long while. But again, this is what's fun about the Royal Rumble is that, in a good one, it always keeps going. And never gets boring, hopefully. And the action never stops. And it's like, who's in that superstar? Especially when you watch this, it's like... Holy shit, like... Even this Rift Flair, Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, Macho Man Randy Savage. Sergeant Slaughter. I think by this point... People were so believing in his bad guy motif... People didn't really look at him the same as the hero. Like at this point, he was a he, he was a hero, like he was a a face. There goes Stinner. I mean, I I I do love Sergeant Slaughter. He was great in the GI Joe cartoon movie. This is for Duke. This is for me. He's my favorite part of that G.I. Joe animated movie. I love Sergeant Slaughter in that. And that G.I. Joe line was pretty popular for him. But, uh... When he was the heel against Hulk Hogan, he got death threats and things of that nature. I think in that kind of... No really bought him as a, a face again. I can't... Because the new crowd remembered him. He's the bad guy. He's the guy with the other stuff and the Gulf War going on. I mean, kind of hard to turn them face again after that. Sid. Sid Justice. In other places, he was known as Sid Vicious. But Sid Justice. People were gun-ho about him. And here's the thing. I liked Sid. And he did some nice tits in there. Well, he did that late really high in those punches. I... I can see why people were for him. If he, when he did his promo slow and low key and sinister, and he's talking like this. I remember there's a promo like I remember when he's when it's leading up to him and holding face off against each other. When he was talking like this, he was talking very slow and low. He worked. But when he started getting his voice higher, hey, I tell you, it didn't quite work. He needed, someone needed to tell him, keep your voice slow and sinister, and you will work well in your promos. But when he would get too excited, he would screw up. Like there's the infamous promo, and half the brain, you know, I have half the brain you do, or something like that. Or he would try to do that bid move and he broke his fucking leg. And. Like. Great body. Great stature. Intimidating. Great look. Again if it's. Look at that. That flip up. That's impressive. Kind of like the rock before the rock. Got on his back and he flips back onto his feet. And people wanted to see some someone fresh. Because even what they did, they had Macho Man Randy Savage, but then, oh, now with Hulk Hogan. Now you're with Hulk Hogan. Now you're with Hulk Hogan. You're with Hulk Hogan. Now you're fighting Hulk Hogan. You're a bad guy. Ultimate Warrior. What great fuse did he get in after winning the championship? Ortiz was Rick Rude again, which is Rick Rude was great, but. Either nobody wanted to work with Warrior, or he maybe had some matches on how shows of Andre the Giant. 
which this, that was his last leg, so Andre couldn't do as much. But what great feuds do you remember other than the, the match he had with Macho Man? And he had a lot of issues and problems, and people didn't want to work with him because he was too dangerous. I think at one point he broke Bobby the Brain Heenan's neck and didn't apologize for it. Warrior I liked in the ring for what he had to do, but didn't seem like a really good guy at all. Look at that spot with Sergeant Slaughter. Man, he really sold it. Flew right out of the fucking ring. What a great spot. Slaughter would do that from time to time. That spot where he runs. That was great. I didn't. Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper, Macho Man Randy Savage. Sid is a great intimidating figure. I writ the model Martell, made good as a villain. Oh, of course, the the warlord. Yeah, I mean, kind of like the barbarian, just in what you know, big guy. I do like this bit with the tie. <laughs> the try to dim out, definitely gets the, the crowd reaction to it. Hulk Cody and Flair doing. I thought they worked well together. Hogan and Ric Flair. I didn't really see the issue with it. It's just maybe it was just too little, too late. People just getting tired of Hogan. Like they enjoy Hogan, yay! And then there's like, oh, is he gonna win again? Does this this would have been the third time in a row if he won? Did they both work together? Get the Warlord out, which pretty much sent him packed in because if you come out number thirty and you get out that quickly, they're not gonna do much with you. Kind of strange now, but think about that. They picked him for number 30. Like, you would think, like, Sid would be number 30 or something. And Sid gets these two out. That's part of the game, to get people out. Now you have four left. Great Final Four. Hulk Hogan, Rift Flair, Sid, and Randy Savage. It actually worked out up, and it's Ric Flair that got Macho Man out. Not Sid, it was Ric Flair. Now, this is what I'm talking about where they changed this. When Sid throws out Hulk Hogan, people cheered. And they fucking changed it to booze. So they fucking... Like, listen to this. Sid... Just hold it out. <clears throat> People cheered. See, now those boos, they put in those boos later. People, it was a thunderous cheer. Yes, yeah, something refreshing. And what Hulk Hogan does here is heelish. He's doing a bad guy shtick. This is what a bad guy would do. Like, he just helped the bad guy win. Like, think about it. He just helped the bad guy win. The bad guy was Ric Flair. The bad guy was Ric Flair. The whole point is to put people over. So, you, as a fan, you look at your whole call and you're going, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, the whole point is to go over the top rope. He didn't do anything wrong. Sid did not do anything wrong. He didn't do anything heelish. He didn't do anything... He didn't cheat. He did it by the rules. Hulk Hogan cheated him. That should have been when Hulk Hogan turned heel. Because that's a way of turning heel. He just turned heel. He must have gone to chair and smacked Sid in the face. And people are on Sid's side. <clears throat> people are on Sid's side at this. You cheated me. I think at this point, maybe people thought, well, Hulk Hogan's going to turn heel. Well, no one thought that. But that's honestly what should have happened. Because what, what, look what happened when Hogan turned heel in, in uh, WCW. People went, what? Made the news. But yeah, Sid did not do anything wrong. Hulk Hogan did everything wrong. 
He was the heel, and he's acting like a baby and going, well, what are you crying about? I don't understand how Hogan could think this was a great choice. Also, look, Ric Flair won, but what's the attention on? Hogan. Ric Flair won the Royal Rumble, but the attention's not on Ric Flair. The attention is on Hulk Hogan and Sid. And more people cheered Sid right now. Because they saw Sid was in the right. Hulk Hogan's a crybaby. Hulk Hogan lost and cheated. He cheated Sid. That's why I say, see, look at the crowd. See the crowd cheering. Yeah. And Hogan sees this. Hogan sees this. Which I don't know why the fuck Hogan would... For a guy who's usually smart with politics, why the fuck... Say, like, look, Hogan. People think you're an asshole. You cheated people out. You fucked up. I think there was a point where Vince McMahon wanted to put the belt on Sid, but Sid, for some reason, said no. Something like, oh, I think I worked as a heel. I think I worked better as a heel. I uh, got the celebration with Ric Flair, Bobby the Brain Heenan, Mr. Perfect. And yeah, this was the Royal Rumble that you win the championship. That wasn't typical of Royal Rumble. But this was one where you won. Nowadays, is you get a shot at the title. But this is a point where you actually win the title. And Ric Flair does a great promo here, I'll say. I mean, with the stuff come out about Ric Flair, I'm not surprised. I never cared for him as an individual. I just thought he was a good wrestler that knew how to make a promo. But you realize a lot of people in the wrestling business just not up the snuff, so to speak. I'll put it that way. But it's a great promo. And later on, pretty much he would defend it at WrestleMania with Macho Man Randy Savage. Because again, they realized, I guess, that Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair wasn't really working for the crowds. Wasn't really working for the house shows. And people weren't as done as people thought. So, give Hogan a monster heel. And, I mean, honestly, Macho Man seems like the better opponent for, uh... Fence changed it because they indeed met in several house shows, and because those shows didn't draw on the same box office like what everyone thought would happen when Hogan and Flair met. Fence assumed they would not draw for WrestleMania, so he changed it. And said you got Rick versus Macho Man and Hogan versus Sid. But yeah, that I think many people have said, understandably so, as being the best WrestleMania of all time. I mean, a uh, Royal Rumble. WrestleMania. The best Royal Rumble of all time. And they got a point. They got a very good point on that. But this was a lot of fun to do. Thanks so much, Sean, once again. I uh, really appreciate it. This was fun to do and look back on this stuff. Back when I gave a crap about wrestling, because I don't give a crap about it today. I really do not. But back then, I did care. Back then, it was pretty cool. Nowadays, I don't give a rat's ass, but back then, it was pretty cool. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.